Got another product here to tear down. This one I got from uh, Amazon, but you can find these on eBay and whatnot. I used this in an earlier video. If you look back in the history, you'll see uh, I reviewed a, a full drive kind of floodlight spotlight thing. And I used this during that review to see what the actual output of that light was. Being said, it's a light level meter. Uh, Tassie is, seems to be the brand, and it's a... Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Tassie 8720 is the uh, model number. So there's a few different ranges. In the box we've got the um, manual. Uh, the ranges we get... If I can find it, are ah, 2,000, 20,000, 200,000 lux. Anyway, we'll look at that in a, in a bit, because this is a product. Take the cap off, and we can uh, turn it on and start reading what the uh, the brightness is. So right now it's 240, but that's uh, times 10. So it's 2,300 lux right here. It comes in this box. Nice little foam insert, so it's uh, a cool little storage box to you know, keep the thing in. Batteries go there. But the specs on this... What do we got? It's all in Chinese for this one, which I cannot read a word of, but the specs here, like I said, 2,000, 20,000, 200,000 lux, three and a half digit, 1,999 is on the count. So that's the maximum we'll do before it jumps up a range. Um, ooh, looks like some accuracy there or something, 6% and 2%. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. The, it'll drift 0.1% per degree. That must be the accuracy there, plus minus 2%. So anyway, it seems to work because I, I used it before and um, it's quite responsive and that sort of thing. You've got a few different buttons here. I can set the range. And uh, there's a hold button there. You know, the usual sort of stuff. You can do the you know, max hold and all that sort of gear. But um, what I'm interested in is to have a look inside and see how it works. So I'll get the uh, screwdriver out and we'll uh, see what's inside. Oh, it's not to come apart already. There we go. So we've got the little light cap, the diffusing cap. That just sits in there like that on top of our sensor chip. And then we've got the main PCB. So let's zoom in and see what we got. So there's our chip. Looks like it's got a bit of blue glass or something on top of it. Maybe that's a, a color correction thing. Increase the accuracy or something. Maybe it's filtering out infrared. So I'll take that out and we'll see if we can get a part number on that chip. I'm interested. That's the bit that I'm really interested in. Yeah, there's a little glass window there. If I can get that to focus. Here's our tiny photo transistor, or the, the sensor anyway. Try and get that to focus. There we go. That's what's reading the light. It may even be a little solar panel or something. I might see if there's a voltage coming out of that or if it's a resistance or something. We'll get back to you in a sec. So I've got it hooked up to the fluke just on uh, DC volts. You can see just here. And I really think this is a, uh, a little mini solar panel. It's got a plus mark on one of the wires. You see got the red and black wires here. And if I um, put my hand around that, you see it, the voltage drops. If I hold it right up to the light, See, it comes up to half a volt. As I move it away, it drops down again. If I put it in, in my hand, we can get it right down. So I think that's a little mini solar panel that's uh, outputting a voltage, and then the uh, device is just reading that voltage and transferring that straight to a, um, a reading. So that's pretty cool. I did notice there was a little bit of uh, something, maybe some flux or something was on the, uh, the front of this. So it's probably worth giving that a clean if you get into one of these yourself. Make sure you're getting uh, the light there accurately and it's not getting blocked by anything. But I'll put that aside. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Little solar panel there. Here's a close-up of the main board. 
the uh, real brain of the operation we can't actually see because it's under this epoxy blob. That's going to be uh, doing the main like processing and all that sort of stuff, and also the uh, analog to digital conversion. Um, they may be on the same dial, and there may be two different chips under there. I'm not sure. I can't really see anything in there. So we'll have a look at these two anyway. Uh, this one here is the uh, K24C02, and it's a two-wire serial EEPROM with two kilobits of memory. That's just going to have the uh, firmware on there. Then this one here, this one's a little bit interesting. It's a 74HC4066. Now this is a, a, a quadruple bilateral analog switch. Basically like a, a silicon relay of sorts. We've got four um, little switches in there and we can turn them on and off and it'll pass a signal and that sort of thing. So you can have like a multiple chips or digital to analog converters and that and you can switch between them and select whatever you want to do, uh, whatever inputs you want to have passing through. What this is actually doing is you can see this row of resistors up here. These are the range resistors. So what happens is when you select a different range, the microprocessor switches on and off diff well, one of four or maybe only one of three uh, switches in here and it selects which resistor is in line and that's what's uh, doing our range. So that's a pretty cool little thing. I might keep a, a mental note of that chip. I might be able to use that sort of thing in something in the future. But um, yeah, it seems to also come up to here and down to here. So this might be like a, I don't know, another firmware chip or some sort of expanded uh, expanded operation or expanded feature set. But my uh, my device here doesn't have it, so yeah, I don't know. But that's that's basically just doing the ranges up here. So that's it for a quick look inside a Tassi eighty seven twenty digital light meter. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget we got that Patreon, and we'll see you next time.